Broccoli is not everyone's favorite vegetable, but it's my favorite vegetable to fill gaps in your bento so nothing moves around. Also, very good for you. Today we're looking at three different ways that you can do broccoli so that it's tasty, easy to make, and fills that gap that you're looking to get rid of. Let's get started. Good morning. My name is Willow. I'm from You Need a Bento. Today we're talking about broccoli and how it can work as a really great space filler. A lot of people don't like broccoli because they've had it boiled forever and it's gross and mushy. We don't want any of that. So today we're going to look at a couple of different methods you can use to make your broccoli way better and maybe a bonus one at the end. So I started with just taking the stems off and cutting all your broccoli into relatively evenly sized pieces. That way when you cook it, the little stuff isn't gonna get gross and the big stuff isn't gonna be undercooked. I'm gonna go blanch some of this broccoli for about 20 seconds and I'll be right back. Back from the stove. This is the color that we're looking for in our blanched broccoli. You don't wanna go any further than this or it'll turn mushy. So you see the difference in colors? This is great with just a little bit of soy sauce, maybe some salt, if you genuinely like broccoli. If you don't, we can take another step. Let's head over to the stove. And here we are, I've preheated a little bit of avocado oil. You can use whatever neutral oil you want. I would not use olive oil as the oil might get too hot. Olive oil smoke point is quite low and you can burn it if it starts to smoke it's probably not going to be the best tasting thing in the world. So here, I'm going to fry about a teaspoon of ginger, or garlic. I'm not going to leave it for long, because it will burn. And I'm going to take my broccoli, throw it in the pan. Try not to get too much of the little bitty pieces because they also may burn. You can do this with either your steamed broccoli or with raw broccoli, depending on, do you like broccoli? I don't mind raw broccoli and I prefer it to be undercooked than overcooked. So I usually use a raw broccoli, but you can do the steamed broccoli that we just made if you like. Now that our broccoli is starting to just start to turn color, we're going to turn the stove off and we're going to take our broccoli out. Last method I will just explain because it's relatively simple and you're not going to see the difference is roasting your broccoli. Now this I don't use for bento as much, but I have, and it's also great for dinner. You cut your broccoli in the exact same way that you just did. Put your oven on at 400, line a baking sheet with parchment paper, oil it, throw your vegetables on, toss them in the oil, salt, pepper, about 15 minutes, and the top should be just a little bit crispy. They're almost like chips, very good. And that's our three ways to make broccoli for your bentos and for anything else that you need broccoli for. I did promise though, a bonus method. This is going to have to be done in voiceover and picture format because it was deep fried by my partner and he didn't want to be filmed. I started with around a quarter to a third of a cup of onion chopped fairly roughly. I used around one cup of potato. That went into a pot with water, thyme, and a bay leaf to boil until the potatoes are soft. Mash them well. Use a little water if you have to. I usually use the boiling water from the potatoes. I mix in around a quarter cup of raw broccoli, chopped fairly small, salt, a tablespoon of Parmesan cheese, and an egg. Drop by tablespoon into a neutral oil. We used a peanut oil at 325 to 350. Each ball should only take two to three minutes because everything but the broccoli is already cooked. 
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked it and I'll see you next week.